Don't say belt and come start from the same place. On only one end inside Bele. So what you do with your time in that house is up to you. The ultimate search is back. <laughs> So this video is one of those videos that I really struggled with to even film, to even talk about. I wanted to film this video since December last year, but I kept on struggling because I am fully aware that the content of this video is going to definitely offend a lot of people. And for that, I apologize, but <laughs> sadly, the truth has to be said, at least from my perspective, because I am fully aware that um, the bulk of you that will be watching this video, of course, you have your own opinion, you have your own perspective. And so from seeing the title of this video already, or even the title on the thumbnail, I'm sure you're already racking your brains that, hmm, hmm, I agree with this, I do not agree with that. But we will still go ahead and talk about it. So on this video, what I'm going to be doing basically is analyzing, mentioning, yes, um, the most strategic reality TV show organizers in Nigeria, of Nigeria in 2021. Uh, let me rephrase that, okay? The most strategic Nigerian reality TV show organizers of 2021. Yes, I mean, you all can attest to the fact that last year, 2021, was one of those years where we had an influx of old reality TV shows coming back on our screens, new ones springing up on our screens. I mean, there's a lot, there was a lot that happened. And this is that video where we get to analyze the ones that were very very strategic and there's also the question of for those who were successfully strategic what exactly did they do right to get the results that they wanted i mean the visible results that even the public could see and for those who were not you know successfully strategic where did they go wrong what exactly did they do wrong that did not work out well for them so we're going to be talking about all of that and please i want to put this disclaimer out there this video is not in any way intended to deliberately or intentionally um, water down the hard work of any reality TV show company in this country, please. Now, instead, please look at it from the perspective of someone that has watched the shows, observed all those things, the loopholes, you know, the great things that happened, and then is preferring solutions on how the shows could be better for next season. Please just look at it that way. Now, that said, after all of that longing through, let's get into the video finally. And one last thing, guys, please ignore the map of Africa on my forehead. I know that I'm a forehead gang. Just ignore it and let's continue. <laughs> now, the first reality TV show I am going to be analyzing as being the most strategic, but then they missed it along the line, no? but doesn't take away the fact that they were very, very strategic, yes. Now, um, that reality TV show is the good at Ultimate Search that actually made a huge comeback um, last year, 2021, with um, a new theme, um, the Age of Craftsmanship, you know, season 12. Guys, let me tell you how these people were very, very strategic. And I also tell you how they flopped big time, how they fell face flat in the mud. So, Big Brother Niger season six was airing, yes. Good at Ultimate Search organizers, they came up with their campaigns. I mean, they were in people's faces with the announcement, with the campaigns, and with all those small, 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 small snipers, information, giving us hints here and there of what to expect with the new Good at Ultimate Search season 12. Guys, I was fully pumped up. For those of you who have been following my reviews back to back, you will see that I was literally putting out videos a lot like, guys, prepare yourselves, you know? People were, people had so much anticipation built up, so much expectations built up. And the reason is because Kuda Ultimate Search stood as the number one show in Nigeria. Yes, old folks, young folks, people who started watching the show, they were really, really looking forward to what was, you know, what was going to be presented to us. Of course, looking at the fact as well that the show had been silent for over five years. And so, they got a lot of audience, they got a lot of traffic, you know, a lot of people were ready to follow the show. And the show started. 
Oh, before the show started, um, Duke Makinwa was announced as the, is it the host? Yes. And then Kunle Remy was announced as the task master. And so we felt like, hmm, this is going to be very, very interesting, you know, um, looking at the fact that, okay, Duke Makinwa is a seasoned media personality and, um, she had also participated or was at the time participating in the big brother ninja you know company hosting the um is it the boss yes hosting the boss so people were really excited looking forward to all the craziness that was going to happen or all the intensity that the show had to offer but sadly <laughs> it turned out that the organizers did not really plan well because by the time the show started a lot of things were wrong. I actually did a video of my observations about the downside of the show. I'm going to link it up on this particular video. Please go ahead and watch that video. Then you will understand. I don't want to make this video too lengthy. So I'm not going to waste time, you know, listing everything out. But that one thing that stood out, that completely pissed off the entire viewing audience of that show was the fact that the show, I don't know if it was a deliberate attempt to be different or to make something new or to make a statement. I don't know what they were thinking, you know. Number one, Toki Makinwa, that was meant to be the host, was also doubling as the taskmaster, which in my opinion was extremely ridiculous. And she was also doubling as the person that carried out the evictions, which in my opinion, from the beginning of the season of that show, was dead, was very dry. Like, <laughs> guys, <laughs> I felt like they were trying to ruin the career of my fave. Okay, my camera is my fave. I felt like they were seriously trying to ruin her career. Oh my God, guys, I did not even find it funny at all but thankfully i made some recommendations on that video about my observations and i saw that um the organizers took some of those corrections that i preferred that some of you also preferred in the comment section and they added it here and there to the show but then they still maintained you know to kim akinwa as the host the taskmaster the evictions master and it came off and guys, to be very frank with you, they couldn't have really done anything at that point in time because it was obvious that the show was pre-recorded. Yes, and that is one of the downsides of pre-recorded shows. Yes, when mistakes are made, it's very, very difficult to go back and correct them because it, it, where you want to see all those people. Toki Makura was literally vacationing somewhere and people who were evicted were literally, you know, living their life or have moved on with their life. You know, so it was crazy, guys. It was crazy. And... At that point in time, it felt as though there was a slight rift between Tokemakiwa and Kunle Remy because when Kunle Remy was trying to probably give instructions to the um, jungle contestants, Tokemakiwa is also coming with her own instructions. So at, on one or two occasions, I noticed the clash and I noticed Kunle Remy's countenance like, dude was really, really pierced. I'm sorry, but it was what we saw. You know, so that completely upset the viewing audience, people, and it created a lot of confusion because, hey, in, with shows like that, we need to know the job description of each staff or participants on the set that we're seeing. We know that contestants are supposed to do this, but then who exactly and what exactly should the host be doing? What exactly should the taskmaster be do, what, uh, should be doing? It was completely different from the old way that we were familiar with on the show and guys to cut the long story short another very very ridiculous thing that the show organizers did was they extended and prolonged the show up until christmas day who does that who does that like who prolongs a reality tv show to end on christmas day christmas day was 25th of december of course everybody knows that on a saturday and then they prolonged the show to flow into christmas day like who is going to sit down at home and be watching good out search on christmas freaking day <sighs> okay that was completely unbelievable that was totally totally ridiculous it felt as though the organizers deliberately took a gun and shot themselves in the face not even in the leg in the face and guys i was just thinking like who plans these things who plan and you know what guys uh, aside that i felt like their pr was really really poor yes i felt like their pr was really really poor a lot of blogs they were not really talking about the show and i felt like it came from the point of you know 
when they first announced a new season a lot of people were expectant so they probably felt that with the traffic they got from big brother Nigeria, they were gonna successfully you know draw the same traffic onto their own show but what they did not realize is that big brother Nigeria has been in existence for a while now and even though big brother Nigeria does not do any pr or does not pay people to talk about the show trust me people will still watch that show people will still tweet about it people will still post content about it yes they've built their reputation to that point and so without even spending money on doing anything if they do not want to the show will still fly it will still get its traffic it will still cause controversy as usual but for good or ultimate search i felt like they were not taking into consideration the fact that they had been silent for so long and needed to do more work in terms of pr so i felt like they literally left you know the show to get its own content organically and i don't know how that ended up for them anyways <laughs> but guys um as i said yes um, Good Ultimate Search was, in my opinion, the most strategic, but then they did all those things wrongly and then they missed it along the line. So it wasn't really strategic after all anymore. Now, moving on to the second reality TV show that I term as the second most strategic, yes, successfully strategic reality TV show of 2021 is The Nigerian Idol. I mean, guys. Who can forget so soon the drama, the trauma, the controversy that people like Shay Shay, DJ Suse, what's the other judge's name? I can't remember, guys. Please go ahead and drop his name in the comment section below. But I can't forget so soon the drama those people caused. But especially the trauma they caused the viewing audience. And to be very frank with you all, in the world of entertainment and reality TV show, that was very, very strategic. Because trust me, people will not take seriously a show that is just going smoothly, no mago mago, no manipulations of results here and there, no drama, no craziness, you know. People will not take such a show serious, at least in the Nigerian context. Because to be very frank with you all guys, Nigerians, we love drama. We are dramatic people. We love controversy. If there's no drama, you know they're sweet. So, in as much as at that point in time, people like me were forming internet activists, you know, fighting for those contestants of Nigerian idols, the show won. It was a win-win situation. Yeah, I mean, for everybody, for the organizers and for us, the viewers. Because at the end of the day, the viewers got who they wanted to win, you know, on a very, very balanced scale, you know. And the organizers too, I'm sure they got massive, massive traffic to their show. But then, before we got to that point of resolution, <laughs> what happened exactly? The controversy, you know, first of all, allowing Beyonce to even skill through the auditions, you know, all the crazy, crazy people that came for the audition. Aside that, um, Beyonce making it through to, is it top eight? And people were like, what? And then the organizers evicting people who were more deserving. Not just Beyonce, comfort <laughs> with her voice of a nightingale <laughs> being allowed to scale through to was it top 10 or was it um, top 9? No, no, not top 9. I think top 4. What, what am I saying? Top 4. Guys, that show almost gave me high blood pressure. I remember after doing my reviews, I'll have to go and check myself like, Gloria, are you okay? Gloria, are you fine? Are you still sane? You know? But but guys, it was fun. It was fun. And hey, Nigerian idols, I heard the people are coming back. Please oh, bring back more drama so that <laughs> we'll fight. <laughs> we'll fight and at the end of the day, we'll get a, a deserving winner. But trust me guys, I felt like Nigerian idols last year, yes, they came prepared. They knew and understood the Nigerian viewing public's um what's that word now they, they understood that the nigerian viewing public was kind of insatiable if that's the right word yes for drama for controversy and so they dished it hot 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 they delivered very well i mean they gave it to us back to back and they made it look as though they were not doing anything wrong which was quite fun as well i mean it added to the thrill yes because it made people rooted to the show people were watching people were waiting to go and protest <laughs> Yes, outside their office, people were waiting to fight because they wanted to see if comfort was going to win the show. And at the end of the day, 
Kingdom won and everybody was happy. Organizers were happy. They got all the traction that they wanted. They got all the traffic. And we also got a deserving winner. So for me, guys, that is true strategy. Yes. If at the end of the day, they had made Beyonce or Comfort win, trust me, whether by voting or not, I don't care how they do it, but <laughs> it would have just flopped their entire strategy but in my opinion i saw all of that as a strategy to retain engagement with the show and it worked 100 percent for the organizers and for me um to dish out um a powerful a strong reality tv show um the organizers should be ready to take those kind of risk and make it work and it worked for them moving on to the third um, reality TV show organizers I felt were very 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 strategic of course is none other than Big Brother my Jack now a lot of you will be wondering like glory why did you have to put Big Brother Ninja as the third most strategic Nigerian reality TV show to have happened in 2021. And I'm thinking, hey, it's a no-brainer. But then I mean that position only makes them the best. The ultimate most strategic <laughs> like all-time strategic reality tv show organizers in nigeria and i'll tell you why fam this is no mediocre attempt to overhype the organizers of big brother niger let's just say it the way it is you see the organizers of that show <laughs> i'm not saying this because oh i was invited to speak on the bus with tokima kinwa no i'm saying it the way it is guys I feel like they are the most organized company ever. Yes. I mean, they are so organized in a way that they pay attention to details. Yes. And people might say that, oh, it's a virtue of the fact that they've been in the business for a while. It's a franchise. So they get support here. And that I don't know about that. I'm not an inside worker. All right. And no matter how much research I do, I will never know. <laughs> I will never know those details. So let's just leave it to the surface that we know. All right. Now, speaking from the perspective of one who has watched the show back to back, season to season, and has observed a lot of things that have been put in place, things that have been changed, switched up, done, you know, to create a more viewing experience, guys. I, I can boldly say that the organizers of Big Brother Niger, they, they are overall strategic. Every single thing they do, they are very, very strategic. With the brands that they partner with, with um, the, the games that they play their task, with the host, <laughs> you see those people shouting and clamoring that hey, they should switch Ebuka and bring somebody else. <laughs> it's not gonna happen because Ebuka is part of the whole strategy. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but I would not want it to happen because Ebuka is a key player in that strategy. If you do not know, refer back to my old videos that I've talked about Ebuka working with um, Big Brother Ninja and Multi Choice. All right, but moving on with this conversation, guys. What I am saying is this, the show organizers understand the business of entertainment. Guys, forget about all those videos I would do bashing them and dragging them, hey, people are doing this. Mm -mm. Let's just say the obvious. They understand the business of entertainment and the business of entertainment, it is no easy feat. It is no easy task. You need to understand the viewing public. You need to understand what keeps the viewers attention rooted to the show you need to understand how to continuously maintain that engagement you need to understand how to generate more traffic and i feel like with all the twists and turns that the show you know brings up or introduces for every season of the show they they are seriously doing a lot of that and another thing i recently started appreciating the organizers of the show for is the ability to take corrections their ability to accept constructive criticism for the past two seasons of the show guys i noticed that maybe not just me i'm not saying i was the only person that gave recommendations mm -mm, i beg but <clears throat> to the best of my knowledge i noticed that most of the recommendations that were preferred on this channel either from me either from you amazing people commenting in the comment section they took a lot of corrections, recommendations, advice, and they implemented it on their show. And guys, they righted a lot of things that would have gone wrong on the show. 
And to be very honest, it takes a company who is very much open-minded to do that. Because of course, before the show starts um, you know, being aired on TV, they must have created a structure, they must have planned, they must have organized how it is going to unfold. So to cut the long story short, um, <laughs> the organizers of Big Brother Ninja, <laughs> I do my hat for them, even though sometimes season by season they do a lot of things that are very very annoying just like nigerian idols and we get to talk about it you know but the the, the the interesting thing is that at the end of the day the person that deserves to win gets to win so let's leave it at that i do not want this video to be too lengthy i would have touched on um, the voice nigeria but i did not really follow up on that show back to back so i cannot really say for sure that oh this is what it did and this is what it did not do i might possibly pay more attention to the show this year if there will be a new season and then there was also the legend show uh, to be very honest they were not strategic at all at all at all at all at all at all i don't want to say that the show was a failed attempt at a reality tv show or a music reality tv show but to be very honest i don't know what they were doing so i wasn't even bothered to watch yes so if there is any other nigerian reality tv show that i did not mention on this video please just go ahead and mention them in the comment section below also don't forget to share your thoughts on all i have said whether you agree or not just go ahead and share your own perspective and i'll see you guys on another episode of frankly speaking with glory elijah i forgot to introduce myself at the beginning so i'll just say that i am the girl with the tea and if this tea really served you hot on a monday morning <laughs> Give this video a huge thumbs up and feel free to share this video on all your socials and I will see you guys on another video. Bye.